Part 8. Men's and Women's Yoga of Intimacy. Take into account the primary asymmetry. Intimate relationship is never the priority in a masculine man's life and always the priority in a feminine woman's life. If a man has a masculine sexual essence, then his priority is his mission, his direction toward greater release, freedom, and consciousness. If a woman has a feminine sexual essence, then her priority is the flow of love in her life, including her relationship with a man whom she can totally trust, in body, emotion, mind, and spirit. Man and woman must support each other in their priorities if the relationship is going to serve them both. Although you and your woman are equal beings, you are very different creatures. If she has a feminine sexual essence, her core will be fulfilled when love is flowing. For example, she can experience difficulties in her career, but if full love is flowing in her life, with her children, friends, and with you, then her core will be fulfilled. Not so for you. If you have a masculine sexual essence, then your woman and children can be loving you all day and night, but if your career or mission is obstructed, you will not feel at ease. You won't even want to share much intimate time with your woman until you have your career or mission back on track. Your woman's core is fulfilled by love. Your core is released from stress by aligning your life with your mission. To you, intimacy is something to be enjoyed in addition to your purpose. To your woman, intimacy is at the core of her life, and the tone of your intimacy colors everything else she does. When your intimacy is going great, your woman's life is filled with the color of love. She feels good at work, at home, in bed. When the intimacy is not going so great, when your woman feels unloved, rejected, hurt, or abandoned by you, then her day will be colored by hurt. At work, at home, and in the bed, the pain of unlove will color her disposition. But, for you, things are different. When your intimacy is going bad, you can't wait to leave the house and go to work. There, you can be in your element, aligned with your purpose, and happy. For you, the intimacy is just one aspect of your life. When you are absorbed in your mission, you often forget entirely about your intimacy. For your woman, the intimacy is at the core of her life and colors everything else she does. This is the primary asymmetry in intimacy. It goes much farther than this, though. For most men, their woman is replaceable. Harsh, but true. If you are like most men, you know, deep down, that if you were to lose your present woman, you would deeply grieve, but you could eventually find another. Many times, in fact, you have probably fantasized about finding another woman even before you lose the one you have. Because a man's priority is his mission, he will always gravitate to a woman whom he feels would most support his mission. If he feels another woman would enliven him and give him more energy for his work, he might desire her as an intimate partner. However, you are lodged in the heart of your woman. She feels you all day. She senses where you are at. Feeling threads from her heart are connected to your heart, day and night. You are not replaceable in her perception. She does not frequently consider other options, as you probably do. Whereas you live in a world of relational possibility, she lives in a world of relational actuality. Your relationship with her is not only at the core of her life, but is also the main determinant of her mood. If your woman has rejected her own feminine core, then she will struggle against her inherent heart connection with you. She will try to identify with her masculine side, attempting to deprioritize you and your relationship. She will think that she must live her own life, and put more energy into her own career, for instance. While it is obviously healthy for every man and woman to learn to become whole and independent, it is self-destructive for your woman to try to lessen the import of your relationship in her life. If she has a feminine sexual essence, the desire for the flow of love is at her core, no matter how dedicated she is to her career or other activities. Without a deep and loving intimacy, with you or with the divine, she hurts. It will never work for her to try to quell the pain by absorbing herself in her career, her art, or her friends. If she has a feminine essence, she must honor herself by owning her deep desire for the flow of love in her heart, just as a person with a masculine essence must honor his or her direction in order to be truly happy. Our culture has become so anti-feminine that many women are trying to deny their feminine core desires and adopt the masculine way of dedication to mission. By denying their feminine essence, such women are predisposing themselves to emptiness of heart, depression, and bodily symptoms of disease. Likewise, you must not deny your woman's feminine essence by feeling or saying to her, your whole life seems to revolve around our relationship. That's not healthy. You should have your own life, your own direction, your own career and friends. Stop complaining about our intimate problems and get a life. While it is common sense that she should live a fulfilling and engaging life outside of your relationship, it is sexual wisdom to understand that her feminine essence will always hold the flow of love at its center. That's just the way it is. This flow of love could be in direct relationship with the divine, 
although it is usually in relationship with a man. The desire for intimate loving is as central to your woman's life as the mission toward freedom, financial, psychological, and spiritual, is to yours. Think of how many hours a day you dedicate to your mission and compare that with how many hours a day you spend serving your woman's deep desire for the magnification of love. If you want her to honor and support you in your quest for freedom, you must honor and support her in her love of loving. Her devotion to love has a lot to teach you. Some men feel guilty for not being as into the relationship as their woman is. You must understand that this is natural. If you have a masculine essence and your woman has a feminine essence, you will never be as concerned, distraught, or elated about your intimacy as your woman is. Don't fake it. Don't try to act concerned for the sake of your woman. She can feel where you are really at. Instead, be authentic to your core desires, and dedicate your life, with utter impeccability, to your highest goals. If one of your highest goals is psychological or spiritual freedom, then you will highly value your intimacy. Nobody will press your buttons or reflect your asshole to you better than your woman. She will point out your weaknesses better than a boot camp drill sergeant. She will reflect your ambiguity or clarity better than any workshop teacher. She will do you better than a whore and give you more loving than you can handle. And all the while she will shower your life with radiant blessing, healing, and enlivenment, if she learns to own her true feminine desires and you learn to own your true masculine desires. When you both honor the primary asymmetry in intimacy, you can each concentrate on your true desires rather than compromising for the sake of an imaginary truce between genders. When your life is truly aligned with your highest purpose, you will become more present, more loving, and more humorous. Your woman will then be the first recipient of your magnified presence, love, and humor. If your intimacy is not constantly growing in this way, your life is not aligned with your highest purpose. Likewise, if your woman devotes herself to her true heart desires, you will feel it. Her energy, radiance, wisdom, and power to create heaven on earth will feed you constantly, even when it is not directed toward you. You will be inspired by her magic, enchanted by her sexuality, awed by her knowingness, and enlivened by the life that flows so lovingly through her body. However, if she has chosen to deny her heart desire and adopt more masculine goals of purpose and mission as her core needs, both of you will suffer. Her radiance will diminish, her guardedness will increase, and neither of your hearts will feel relaxed in the intimacy. Your woman could be a corporate executive and you could be a house husband. That's fine, as long as you are living your highest purpose and her life is devoted to love. Honor this primary asymmetry, in yourself and in your woman. Only when you are willing to support each other's core desires will the intimacy give each of you what you want, and then perhaps bring you beyond even that, into the utter joy of being, of which your relationship is only a hope. You are responsible for the growth in intimacy. There are masculine and feminine gifts in intimacy, and each gift comes with its own responsibility. The direction of growth of a relationship is primarily the man's responsibility. The energy of an intimacy, pleasure, sexual flow, and vitality, is primarily the woman's responsibility. A simplified way of saying this is that the man is responsible for the woman's depth of love, or openness of mood, and the woman is responsible for the man's erection, or energy in the body. Once you have grown into independent adulthood, you no longer need somebody to take care of you. You can be responsible for yourself. In particular, you realize that you are responsible for your own happiness. Nobody can live your life for you. You must create your own health, success, and happiness. This sense of self-responsibility is only a partial maturity, however. Beyond self-responsibility lies the responsibility to give your gift. It is important to grow beyond dependence in your intimate partner for your own happiness. But it's equally important to grow beyond simple independence and autonomy. The next stage of intimacy after personal independence has been attained as the mutual flow of gifting, or serving each other in love. You may have noticed that your woman can get lost in her moods. She can get on a roll of hyper-nervousness. Or, she can feel dejected and mope around the house surrounded by a black cloud. It is extremely difficult for most women to get out of their mood once they are in it. Your loving intervention is one of your great masculine gifts. The point is not to be her therapist, but to be her wake-up call, her heart-opener, her reminder of the primacy of love. If it takes you more than five minutes to open her into love, you are probably talking too much and acting too little. Or, perhaps you have forgotten your true purpose. Your masculine gift is to know where you are, where you want to be, and what you need to do to get there. If you don't know one of these, then you need to discover it by any means necessary. This vision is, essentially, the basic gift you have to offer your woman, as well as the world. If you have no higher vision than the day-to-day -day grind of housework, job, childcare, TV, and vacations, you are failing your birthright. 
your woman will feel cheated and ungifted by you, as will the world. And they will both give you less of their gifts in return. If your woman is always stressed out, you need to know what she could do with her life, in very practical terms, so she can relax. Perhaps she needs to exercise more, meditate more, change her career, dance more, or spend more time with her women friends. If your woman feels unfulfilled most of the time, you need to know what she is missing. How often does she open her heart and body in the irrepressible ecstasy of devotional surrender? How often does she abandon herself fully into the divine love which surrounds her? How often do you serve her to do so? Are you playing the game of sensitive man, giving her space to be miserable rather than offering her your consistent and fearless gifting? And if she doesn't want your gift, your deepest wisdom and unsuppressed loving, then why would you want to be with her? Your main gift in intimacy is to guide her, moment by moment, out of her moods and into the openness of loving. And then, day by day, to guide her life into greater degrees of divine love, even beyond the relationship, so that her life becomes primarily communion, gifting, and celebration. If you cannot offer your woman such guidance, what can you offer her? Why is she with you? What is your relationship all about? To offer this masculine gift, you must cultivate your sense of daily practice. Like a musician practicing his art, you must practice, daily, the art of feeling through your fear, feeling to your edge, and then living just beyond your edge, neither slinking into private consolation nor pushing so hard you disconnect from your source. The source that is your deepest truth must become more and more the impulse of your life. Over time, all of your activities must become aligned to this source. And some must your relationship. Because you probably tend to become lost in your thoughts, in your goals, and in your projects, one of the main gifts your woman can offer you is getting you into your body, into the present, into love, which connects you to your source. Through her touch, her loving, and her attractiveness, she can also give you energy, so that your whole body becomes like an erection, full and alive, and ready to penetrate the world into love. Your woman might be the president of the United States. Still, if you have a masculine sexual essence, her special gift to you is to bring you back into your body with the attractive force of her feminine energy. Without a woman to serve your present embodiment of love, you might spend most of your time working on your projects, staring into a computer screen, churning thoughts in your head, or seeking future goals of financial or spiritual freedom. Meanwhile, you have lost touch with the present, with your body and your woman. When you can simply be with your body and your woman, fully present, without pulling away into your head of separation, then the boundaries begin to dissolve in the openness of your loving. When you can feel through your woman and your body, they become as if transparent, and the source and radiant substance of existence becomes obvious through them. Your natural gesture in this revelation of transparency is service. There is nothing to do but dissolve in the giving of your gift. Your woman may not want to receive your gift. Your woman may resist your gift. And some may the world. But you have no choice. Leave at your edge. Love as fully as possible. Let your body be erect with the energy of your deep source. And take full responsibility for giving whatever love you have realized to the world and your woman. Both will seem to refuse you and seduce you, until you can feel through them. Feel through your woman in the world, and die in the giving of your gift. Insist on practice and growth. Direction in life is a masculine priority, even in intimate relationship. A less spiritually mature man may say to his woman, my way or the highway. A man in the process of growing will often soften his direction and seek a compromise with his woman, playing Mr. Nice Guy. But a superior man will not settle for less than the fullest incarnation of love of which he and his woman are capable. With compassion, he slices through all bullshit and demands authenticity and humor. It's as if he were saying to his woman, the divine way or the highway. It's the same masculine insistence on direction that a weaker man will demand. But rather than wanting his woman to follow his personal direction, a superior man wants her to move in the direction that most serves her growth in love and happiness. He will settle for nothing less. If you don't know your own direction in life, you certainly will stand on shaky ground offering your woman direction. So the first step is to align your own life so that, at least in this present moment, you are living at your edge, fully aligned with your sense of purpose. If you are not absolutely certain that, in this moment, you are living exactly the life you need to, then your woman will feel your lack of clarity, and she will fight any kind of guidance you offer her. You will tend to forget the purpose of your existence as you get lost in your daily round of projects, business, and duties. Your woman will tend to forget the love at her core as she gets lost in cycles of mood and emotion. As a gift to both of you, you must cut through your own nose to the grindstone mentality as well as your woman's ensconcement in sadness, fear, and anger, and reveal the truth. 
however deeply you have penetrated into the mystery of existence, it is that depth from which your gift will spring. Any obstruction to that depth, by yourself or your woman, must be cut through, in the present moment, so your gift may come from the deepest source. If you don't cut through and take direction, your woman will. Masculine and feminine energies in intimacy are governed by the law of conservation. The less masculine direction you are living in truth, the more masculine direction your woman will take on. If you are lolling about in Bozoland, or working hard but actually not living your true gift, then your woman will resent your lack of deep direction. She will begin to take on the masculine blade herself, trying to cut through your lolling, so that you feel the urgency, connect to your depth, and really give your gift. Since at your core, however, you are masculine, her masculine attempt to cut through your lolling will depolarize you. You will bash heads with her, like two rams, since both of you are in your masculine. And if you move into your feminine, things may get worse. A deep habit may develop wherein no matter how strong you are in the business world, you become pussywhipped in your relationship. Your woman gets sharp and masculine, you become falsely receptive and agreeable, and meanwhile both of you feel like vomiting. If your woman is chronically sharp with you, it is most likely a sign that, regardless of how successful you are outside of your intimacy, you are not aligning both of your lives with the highest truth. You are not cutting through the underbrush of your duties and your woman's moods to reveal the fertile ground source of your lives. And so your woman must wield her own sword. By the law of conservation of masculine and feminine energy, whatever masculine gifts you aren't offering, your woman will naturally try to offer. But since, in truth, your core is masculine, her masculine offerings will most likely turn you off, eventually even repulsing you. You are entirely responsible for cutting through your own laziness, addictions, and unclarity. There is nothing to wait for and nobody to blame. Whatever techniques are appropriate, use them. Try talking with your friends, using therapy, practicing meditation or prayer, going on a vision quest, reading scripture, walking in nature, keeping a journal, or studying with a teacher. Remember that your success with any method you choose depends entirely in your actual commitment to discovering your deepest truth and aligning your life with it. You could meditate until you're blue in the face, but it won't work if, when it comes down to it, you'd rather masturbate, read the newspaper, or watch TV than cut through your addictions, discipline your daily life, and give your gift from your deepest, most blissful source. The quality of your intent and the consistency and depth of your application determine the results of your direction in gifting, as well as your capacity to guide your woman's life into greater happiness and bodily surrender into love. Restore your purpose in solitude and with other men. A man rediscovers and fine-tunes his purpose in solitude, in challenging situations, and in the company of other men who won't settle for his bullshit. But women strengthen their feminine radiance best in the company of other women in mutual celebration and play. A man must arrange for both forms of restoration, his own solitude and men's gatherings, and his woman's time with other women. If you spend too much time with your woman, you will rub off on each other in the worst way. In order to get along together, she will begin to adopt your masculine patterns of speech, denying her feminine desire to flow in play and pleasure without having to make masculine style sense or fulfill a purpose. You will begin to adopt her feminine patterns of touch and affection, denying your desire to get down to it, with your mission or your woman. Instead, you will find yourself pecking your woman on the cheek or giving her hugs and pats of lovey-dovey reassurance. In short, the goddess and the warrior will become neutralized householders sharing only the mildest play of sexual polarity. In order to enliven her feminine core, your woman should spend time every day in absolute abandon and celebration. During these times of dancing, singing, laughter, and sheer delight, her body and mind should be totally released of any obligation to be masculine, directed, controlled, structured, or goal-oriented. These occasions are most rejuvenating when she is with other women, magnifying and rejoicing in each other's feminine radiance and flow. If your woman lacks this frequent feminine rejuvenation, she will develop symptoms of depressed feminine energy. Disease, especially in her more feminine parts, lack of life energy, low sexual desire and enjoyment, and a blue, downhearted, despondent disposition. Much of the modern men's movement has concentrated on men reclaiming their inner feminine energy. If you want to revitalize your own feminine energy, then you can do pretty much the same as women do to revitalize their feminine energy. You can go out into the woods and sing and dance and laugh with your friends. For men who have become rigidly stuck in their masculine direction, without allowing the flow of joy and sharing in their lives, this is good medicine. But for men who have lost their sense of purpose, who don't know what their life is about, or who have trouble aligning their life with their truth, singing and dancing aren't the remedy. The cure for lack of purpose is to be challenged to live at your edge, since you have lost the capacity to live there by yourself.
The two ways to bring you right to your masculine edge of power are austerity and challenge. Austerity means to eliminate the comforts and cushions in your life that you have learned to snuggle into and lose wakefulness. Take away anything that dulls your edge. No newspapers or magazines. No TV. No candy, cookies, or sweets. No sex. No cuddling. No reading of anything at all while you eat or sit on the toilet. Reduce working time to a necessary minimum. No movies. No conversation that isn't about truth, love, or the divine. If you take on these disciplines for a few weeks, as well as any other disciplines that may particularly cut through your unique habits of dullness, then your life will be stripped of routine distraction. All that will be left is the edge you have been avoiding by means of your daily routine. You will have to face the basic discomfort and dissatisfaction that is the hidden texture of your life. You will be alive with the challenge of living your truth, rather than hiding from it. Unadorned suffering is the bedmate of masculine growth. Only by staying intimate with your personal suffering can you feel through it to its source. By putting all your attention into work, TV, sex, and reading, your suffering remains unpenetrated, and the source remains hidden. Your life becomes structured entirely by your favorite means of sidestepping the suffering you rarely allow yourself to feel. And when you do touch the surface of your suffering, perhaps in the form of boredom, you quickly pick up a magazine or the remote control. Instead, feel your suffering, rest with it, embrace it, make love with it. Feel your suffering so deeply and thoroughly that you penetrate it, and realize its fearful foundation. Almost everything you do, you do because you are afraid to die. And yet dying is exactly what you are doing, from the moment you are born. Two hours of absorption in a good Super Bowl telecast may distract you temporarily, but the fact remains. You were born as a sacrifice. And you can either participate in the sacrifice, dissolving in the giving of your gift, or you can resist it, which is your suffering. By eliminating the safety net of comforts in your life, you have the opportunity to free fall in this moment between birth and death, right through the hole of your fear, into the unthreatenable openness which is the source of your gifts. The superior man lives as this spontaneous sacrifice of love. The other means, besides austerity, for rediscovering your masculine core is through challenge. The more superficial forms of challenge include activities like mountain climbing, ropes courses, competitive sports, and boot camp. These forms of physical challenge instantly enliven the masculine sense of purpose and direction, in men and women. Deeper forms of challenge involve directly giving your gift in ways that have been blocked by your fear. If you have always been afraid of public speaking, you can take on the challenge of speaking in public once a week for three months. If you fail and miss an appointment one week, the following week you must give three talks. If you have always wanted to write a novel, but could never finish one, you tell your friends that you are going to complete one chapter a week, or a month, for the next year. Every time you don't complete your weekly goal, you owe your friends $100. If you don't complete your yearly goal, you owe them $10,000. The point is, there must be a consequence for freezing in the face of fear. There are obvious consequences for freezing in the face of fear when mountain climbing or playing competitive sports. You must instill consequences throughout the rest of your life, unless you want to cling to the safety net of superficial pleasures. The most potent forms of masculine realignment involve both austerity and challenge. Go to the middle of the woods, by yourself, with only survival necessities. Nothing to read, nothing to do. Fast from food and don't sleep for as long as possible. Challenge your attention with some practice, like chanting or ritual movement, so that your attention doesn't drift or become balmy. Open yourself and wait. Do not cover your suffering. Do not quit before you fall through the hole of your fear and emerge with a vision of your true mission, the unique form of your living sacrifice. This kind of isolation and challenge is an extreme and potent form of masculine vision questing, but there are more common forms that are useful in everyday life. Spend time every day in solitude, with no distractions. Just sit, for 10 minutes. No fidgeting, no channel surfing, no magazine thumbing. Just be, exactly as you are, not trying to change anything. Stay with your suffering, until you fall through it and intuit the groundless source of your life. Just as your woman must regularly spend time with only women, you must regularly spend time with only men. At least once a week, get together with your men friends to serve one another. Cut through the bullshit and talk with each other straight. If you feel your friend is wasting his life, tell him so, because you love him. Welcome such criticism from your friends. Suggest challenges for each other to take on, in order to bring each other through the fears which limit your surrender in gifting. Always agree on consequences for not persisting in the challenge. For instance, if you agree to ravish your wife for three hours every other day for a week, then also agree to mow your friend's yard if you miss a day of ravishment. You should alternate these kinds of cutting through the bullshit gatherings with masculine celebrations. 
Even during these celebrations, though, there should be a challenge to remain conscious and undistracted. They are not occasions for lapsing from fullness, but for communing beyond fear. Perhaps you can all go swimming in ice cold water together. Or drink to the point of inebriation and then spend the rest of the night chanting hymns of the mystery of existence, nobody allowed to drift. Whatever you do, share as much loving as you can with your friends, without settling for mediocrity or less than each man's fullest gift. Make sure that you arrange for your woman's rejuvenative time and your own. Otherwise, you will rot in the cushions of bargain stagnation and sexual neutralization which pad your true edge of living your gift in relationship.